experiment is a titration of acetic acid with a standard base. We're going to be using KHP to standardize sodium hydroxide, which means that we're going to be determining its concentration. We're doing this using titration, which is a method used to determine unknown concentrations using volumes, which is why it's also called volumetric analysis. Now in the first part, we're using KHP because it has a very large molecular weight, which means that if we miscalculate by 0.1 grams, it won't affect the results very much. However, if we use something which was 40 grams per mole and we calculate it to 40.1 grams, then we would have a larger error. And remember that we're using sodium hydroxide in the first and second parts of this experiment, so it must stay in your burette at all times. For the second part of this experiment, we're going to use our standardized sodium hydroxide whose concentration has already been found. We're going to use the sodium hydroxide to find the concentration of the unknown, which is acetic acid. And by titrating with the sodium hydroxide, we can find the concentration of the acetic acid. In this experiment, we're going to be using a burette, which is already calibrated in milliliters. And remember, when reading the burette, always read to two decimal places. We're going to take our volume, which is in milliliters, and convert it to liters. For example, when using the burette, you can start out with an initial volume of 0.52, and the final volume is found when the end point is reached, which in this case is when there's a color change in the solution. In my example, I got 30.25 milliliters. I can take the final volume minus the initial volume to find the total volume used. And again, remember to change this from milliliters to liters. Remember guys, all of this is in the lab packet, so be sure to read your lab packet and take the readiness test. These are the supplies you're going to be using in this week's experiment. You're going to be using a 25 milliliter pipette, as well as a bulb that you're gonna to use to draw out the solution. You're also be using, going to be using a burette for the titration, you're going to be given an unknown, which contains a certain amount of acetic acid, which you will be determining in your calculations. And remember, when you do this, you want to write down the unknown letter in your lab notebooks. Next, we have solid sodium hydroxide, which is going to be used to prepare a sodium hydroxide solution, which will go inside your burette for the titrations. You're going to be using KHP to titrate. And lastly, again, for your titration, you're going to have phenolphthalein, which is an indicator, which will tell you when your endpoint has been reached. Now remember to wear rubber gloves, goggles, and closed toe shoes for safety. The first step of the experiment is to prepare a solution, and the solution you're going to be preparing is sodium hydroxide. This will be used as a titrant. Now, before coming to class, you calculated a mass that you're going to be using of the sodium hydroxide to prepare 250 milliliters of about 0.65 molar sodium hydroxide. Now you're gonna take that accurately weighed mass to four decimal places that you did record in your lab notebook and add it to 250 milliliters of water. Now once you do that, you're just going to stir until all the solid sodium hydroxide has completely dissolved. Your next step is going to be to prepare the KHP solution. Now when you do this, once again, you already calculated the amount of KHP that you will need before coming to class. So weigh this on the balance and record it to four decimal places, and then add it to your Erlenmeyer flask. Once you do this, you're gonna add 25 milliliters of water Try dissolving the solution as much as you can, however, it will not dissolve completely until you titrate. Your last step is going to be to add the phenolphthalein as an indicator, and this is a very important step because if you do not add the indicator, then you will not be able to see the endpoint or the color change. And you are going to be repeating this part three times for three separate trials. However, the mass of the KHP will not be the exact same for each time, so make sure that you record all the different masses in your lab notebook. Alright, so before we titrate, we're going to wash our burette with the sodium hydroxide solution that you already made. Before washing it, make sure 
that the burette is closed, and using a funnel, they're going to pour some of the solution into the burette. You're then going to open it and let the sodium hydroxide wash out. After washing it, close the burette again. And now we're going to pour our solution once again into the burette. Now, remember you don't have to start at 0.00 milliliters to be exact, but make sure to record the initial volume to two decimal places in your lab notebook. After filling up your burette, place it back on the ring stand. Now before you titrate, I would recommend having a white paper as a background so that you see the color change more clearly. And remember guys, you use phenolphthalein as the indicator to see the color change. So before you titrate, open the burette slowly so that the solution comes out drop by drop. And as the solution is coming, you initially see the color changes, but it fades away. Gently stir as you're titrating. Now, as we reach the end point, you'll see that the color becomes more persistent. Our goal here is to get a light, faint pink color. Now remember, once again, towards the end of the titration, the pink color will last a bit longer. And once you have the final drop, it will be a persistent pink, a very faint pink like this. For this experiment, it usually takes about 25 milliliters. However, the more KHP you weighed in the beginning, the larger volume it will take of NaOH. And lastly, you are going to be repeating this for three trials. And when you do this, make sure you record three different masses of KHP because you do not want to get the exact mass every single time. For the second titration, you'll be using a solution that contains an unknown amount of acetic acid. You'll be using a pipette to get exactly 25 ml of your solution. Now you'll be transferring your unknown solution to the flask. Then you add 25 ml of your distilled water. Then add 3 drops of your indicator. Then you will titrate this as you did before. And rem remember that the volumes will be different and you will be repeating this 3 times. In conclusion, be sure to record the volumes in this experiment, the concentrations, and the masses to the correct number of significant figures and units. There are a number of calculations and conversions that we're going to be completing this week. The first calculation that should be done before you come into class is we have to figure out how many grams of sodium hydroxide are needed to prepare 250 milliliters of approximately 0.65 molar NaOH. The next calculation that you should do before coming into class is to figure out how many grams of KHP are needed to react with about 25 milliliters of our prepared NaOH solution. We're going to be using this approximate mass three times in our titrations. Um, using the information that we obtain in these calculations, plus the volumes that we obtain during our titrations, we can therefore determine the molarity of our acetic acid. We're going to use the molarity of acetic acid, convert it to moles, and then grams, and then 
we can use this to therefore determine the mass percent of our acetic acid in our vinegar solution. Remember that we're assuming our density to be one gram to one milliliter of in our vinegar solution. And be sure to read your lab packet and take the readiness test.